Howdy folks and welcome to the Hillbilly Kitchen. Today we're going to be making a two ingredient fudge. Now this is a really, really simple recipe and it's a good recipe for kids because nothing gets really hot when you're making it. Um, me and Charlotte made some of this yesterday and what I have is a 14 ounce can of sweetened condensed milk. Now when you go shopping for this, you want to get the, it, the brand doesn't matter, but you wanna check the ingredients and you wanna make sure it says just milk and sugar. So you do want to make sure it's sweet. This is not going to be very good without the sweetened milk. And the other thing that I have is a 12 ounce bag of semi-sweet chocolate chips. Again, any brand will do. You don't want to use milk chocolate chips in this because it won't set up firm enough with milk chocolate. You could use dark chocolate. Um, you'll have to get your milk a little bit hotter if you use dark chocolate because it takes a little bit more to melt the dark chocolate, but dark chocolate will definitely work in this. And there's an endless number of things that you can add to this um, to change it if you want to. Um, you can add in a little bit of vanilla, which will just make it a little richer. Probably only about half a teaspoon. You don't wanna do too much because if you do too much, it will affect the way that it sets up. And I'm just gonna give this a little bit of a stir to kind of combine my milk and my chocolate chips. And i use that for my dirty spoon. <laughs> and then I'm gonna put this in the microwave for 30 seconds. You don't wanna put it in for longer than 30 seconds at a time. And after the first minute, you're gonna cut it down to 15 seconds at a time. But this is only gonna take about a minute in my microwave. So 30 seconds in the microwave. You can put nuts in this, you can put mini marshmallows, you can put chopped fruit. And this is a little bit different than cooked fudge. This is gonna give you gift shop fudge. You know, the stuff you buy in the little um, safety fresh plastic containers where you rip the tab off and it's like poured in the container. That's what this is gonna give you. So the texture's a little bit different than the cooked fudge, but it's still very good fudge. Okay, now you just wanna stir it. And depending on your microwave, it might take longer and you can melt this um, on your stove in a pot if you want to. This might even be a good recipe to hang on to, give you something to do with the kids when you're camping or something. You know, I was always looking for stuff that I could do with the kids when we went camping. And it's starting to melt, but not quite melted. So you can stick it back in for another 30 seconds. And you do wanna line your pan, because like I said, this is not gonna give you the same consistency as cooked fudge. It's a little bit softer and a little bit more moist. Now it's going to set up really nice and I'm going to show you how it sets up because Charlotte and I did make some yesterday. But um, it's going to be very hard to cut it and get it out of the pan if you don't line the pan so you can just lift it out. You don't need to go crazy when you're lining it. Just make sure whatever you're lining it with, whether it's parchment paper, wax paper, or plastic wrap, that your paper comes out over the edge of your pan so you can lift it out. Okay, now if it takes longer than a minute in your microwave, at the minute point, you want to cut it down to 15 seconds at a time because if you get your chocolate too hot it will lump up and you'll never get it smooth okay but you can see here one minute in the microwave 30 seconds at a time and about a minute of stirring it is perfectly smooth 
and it has a nice shiny sheen to it which is what you want when you're making fudge and it literally takes two minutes of effort and because you're lining the pan once it sits up you don't even have to wash the pan but once you've got it all smooth and mixed up you just pour it in your lined pan and like I said you don't need to go crazy trying to get that to stick down in there or anything just make sure it overlaps the edge so you can lift it out once the fudge is set and you can see it's already sitting up pretty fast now I could put this back in the microwave for like another 15 seconds and make it much runnier if I didn't get it in my pan quick enough and that would be fine I do want to warn you grandmas if you make this with your grandkids make it right before they're about to be picked up because if you let a young person lick this off the sugar chaos that will ensue <laughs> is not anything you want to deal with did that one yesterday now all you're going to do with this is you're going to put it in the refrigerator for about an hour and if you let them lick that spoon off they're not going to want to wait an hour to get another piece of fudge either not good but in an hour it will be completely firm and there's pretty much no way to mess it up and like I said you can add other stuff in it if you want to you know if you wanted to do Rocky Road or something I have not tried to do this with peanut butter now you couldn't do it with regular peanut butter but you might be able to do it with the peanut butter chips I haven't tried that if any of y'all try it maybe let me know how it comes out but if you just put regular peanut butter in it it would not set up part of what makes this set up and get hard is the chocolate in it like I said the milk chocolate's too soft you can't use it you have to use the semi-sweet or the dark chocolate or it won't set up once it sets up it is very much the consistency of the gift shop fudge that you buy the stuff that you buy for anywhere from 10 to 20 dollars a pound um, it's softer than cooked fudge now it's not like taffy it's not going to be chewy or anything like that but it's softer and creamier than the cooked fudge um, like cooked fudge you would have to have a pretty sharp knife to cut it and you can see that this cuts fairly easily with just a butter knife but you can also see it's not stuck to my plate so it's not like gooey or anything it's set up it holds its shape really nice and it does give you something pretty much identical to the gift shop fudge and it's a really easy one to make um, and it's easy to cut it down if you want a small batch you can use half a bag of chocolate chips and use half a can of sweetened condensed milk or at the Dollar Tree you can get those little cans of sweetened condensed milk I think they're like five ounces so you would use maybe a third of a bag of chocolate chips in it like maybe three quarters of a cup or something like that somewhere between three quarters of a cup and a cup of chocolate chips with one of those small cans of sweetened condensed milk that you can get at the Dollar Tree so if you need a small batch of fudge if you don't want to stand and stir it over the stove and you don't want to stand and stir it after it's cooked you know trying to get the air in it so it has the right consistency this is definitely an option and it's good it's different than the traditional but it is very good it sells for 10 to 20 dollars a pound and people buy it by the tons and here's another little idea for you a batch this size will fill about two of these little tins this size and you can pour it right in the tin and let it set up in the tin now it won't fill it to the top it'll fill it halfway up but you could do a layer of fudge and then you could do maybe some other kind of candy in it and if you do that you can line your tin with um, saran wrap or plastic wrap and then once it sets up wait until it's set then just fold your plastic wrap over it and that'll seal your fudge up airtight in your tin that might be something you might want to consider mailing to folks and I've done this several Christmases I've given the little tins as gifts and I've mailed them to people I'm hoping I'm gonna have time this Christmas to send out a few tins but I don't know if I will or not but that's an idea and that's something I do every year is do these little gift tins with candy in them before I go I do want to say thank you I'm starting to get some Christmas cards this one is from Bobby and Jennifer Charlotte played with this all day yesterday while we made fudge she said it was so cute 
and Peggy sent me a card. Thank you, Peggy. That is very sweet. But I love to get Christmas cards, and that's something else that we got back this year. Folks are starting to send Christmas cards again. I've seen several things on Facebook uh, posts that people are making. Here's my address. Send me a Christmas card, and I'll send you one back. Let's get the paper Christmas cards started again. And it is fun to go to the mailbox and open up Christmas cards, and it is not. It's it gives you a um a really peaceful warm feeling to know that people thought about you enough to take the time to address an envelope and send you a christmas card so i love getting christmas cards send christmas cards to the people that you care about take a few minutes to do that i really truly hope that all of you your homes are just filled all through this Christmas season with the love of God, the peace and the joy of forgiveness and the hope of eternal life. Thank you so much for joining us in the Hillbilly Kitchen. If you have not already, please don't forget to click like and subscribe before you leave. And until next time, remember to put God first.